I shave. I I shave. I shave. Um, so tonight's presentation is on a pseudomucal dwarf rainbow fish genus. Um, for all you guys who don't know what the pseudomucal rainbow fish is, it's the most smallish rainbow fish out of the whole entire um, classification of the rainbow fish. Usually you would find them in more of your nano tank, um, planted tank aquariums. A lot of the fishes have been around for a long, long time, but it's only in the hobby um, within recent years because they're a great, great addition to um, your planted tanks. A lot of people are into planted tanks and they are very, very nice in um, planted, um, planted tanks. So right now, this is the overview and habitat, um, habitat on the pseudo species. Uh, so this part is a brief summary and habitat of the pseudomigal rainbow fish. Um, pseudomigal rainbow fish are known as real dwarf rainbow fishes and it's a study and awesome addition to anyone's, any nano or planted aquarium. See, I can't even read my head. Pseudomigal rainbow fish uh, has a wide range of species. We only see a partial of what is available to the hobby. Um, the pseudomugal rainbow fish and species are epidemic to Australia and New Guinea. Um, with Australia being, being extremely strict for exporting any live tropical fish caught in a while, we don't see what Australia has to offer. Um, New Guinea provides around half of the species that the um, pseudomugal genus uh, provides. Our pseudomugal species are found in today's hobbies are more native to Papua and New Guinea rivers and lakes. Uh, pseudomugal's natural habitat has a nice vegetation, low in pH. Some parts of Papua is more murky and swamp-like while other parts are still moving with plenty of water. All still in low pH, roughly between 6.0 and 6.5. The pseudomigo rainbow fish prefer high vegetation in the aquarium that mimic the natural habitat. The pseudomigo rainbow fish um, <coughs> like their high vegetation and are more likely to breed. Um, fry are more likely to survive, which I found hard, have other sources of food and not just dry staple food. Um, so this overview concerning the high vegetation, um, in this picture, there's not too much high vegetation inside, but what the pseudomugal rainbow fish, they like the rooty areas and the grassy areas of um, the lakes and rivers. They like to stay in the shallow parts. Um, so they can lay their eggs, look for small insects and live food so they can feed off and the fry can um, also pick off of the, usually it's the green algae and fruitia. Okay, so going on to the care guide. The pseudomigal dwarf rainbow fish are very simple and easy fish to raise and keep. The key to keeping a pseudomigal rainbow fish is to know how it was kept and mimic the habitat of the fish. Clean and good aeration in your aquarium is required. Uh, Pseudomigos don't have a large mouth, so feeding crushed foods is best. Providing live staples every so often is a good method to help uh, produce their breeding activities. Uh, so, how I usually keep my pseudomigos, I kept it in different types of um, settings. I, also, I have them in, um, in a packet tank inside my house, and I also have a set inside a shallow round tub downstairs um, where I keep my guppies and ghost shrimp and my live cherry shrimp downstairs. Um, the surface area is really great so a lot of evaporation help evaporate all the ammonia and all the bad stuff. And it's really high in that, uh, vegetation. I have a lot of foxtail uh, cornwort and I also have a lot of floating plants such as um, uh, large giant, we call it giant duckweed, uh, frogbait, dwarf water lettuce, and uh, red roof floaters. 
this is kind of to mimic and help them breed in that area. I feed them uh, crust flakes and I feed them uh, once a week Daphnia to help promote their breeding so they breed. A lot of people, uh, for me, I breed them in there and it's fairly easy to breed them because there's some, it's really, really dense vegetation. So it's very hard for the adults to uh, go and eat the eggs or even eat the fry. So a lot of times I would see little babies on the top and then I would just scoop them out and put them in a smaller tank for a little while till they get up to a certain size. They grow fairly fast because they're small nano fishes and they don't exceed the size of maybe inch and a half, two inches. Um, as far as my indoor tank, they don't breed as readily as my downstairs on my tub, uh, being that they're so open, they're not as uh, heavily dense vegetation, and the eggs get eaten real quick. The student bugles really eat um, their eggs real fast. They're pretty quick. When they need to find food, they'll find it. Okay, so um, continue on to breeding. So student bugles are fairly easy to breed. To get the rainbow fish to breed, you will need to either have a breeding mop, floating plants with dense roots, or a lot of moss. Since pseudomugos eggs are um, pseudomugos are egg scatterers and will eat their eggs or fry, it is best to remove the plant moss or mop and put it into a tank with air or a QT tank. A QT mean quarantine tank. The eggs will take 7 to 12 days to hatch. The fry are very tired, and tiny, no bigger than a pepper flake. Feeding your fry can consist of either egg yolk, green water, powdered food, or baby brine shrimp. They grow very slow, it may take several weeks to actually get some size to your babies. Um, the methods I usually use to feed my baby, um, my baby pseudomugles is usually green water and powdered food. I rarely uh, use baby brine shrimp because it's a pain in the butt to always make baby brine every two days. Uh, I did try the egg yolk method. It does work, but it does clog the water real fast. So I, my suggestion is to either um, create your own infusia with um, leaf, um, leaf, lettuce leaf in um, tank water, and it takes about a two three to five days to create that, have the nest break down and create, start creating the infusion of the green water um, to feed to the pseudo eagles. Um, powder foods, I usually use, since I collect and I have ornamental shrimp, um, there's a wide range of baby shrimp food that I do use to feed my uh, pseudo eagle baby fish. Um, so talking about the, the breeding habits and using the moss, uh, floating plants. I've had them breed more of a floating plant settings rather than a mop. I've tried the mop method, but I'm I'm lazy. I'm gonna admit it, and I don't really keep track of to look for the eggs in the mops. So I usually just let them go inside the the nest, um, nest inside the floating plant roots. And usually when I start seeing the babies, I usually take a big I have a big pipette, a five ml. I pet and I just squeeze them out, I suck them up and I just shoot them into another tank. Or I just let them go. They usually in my tub, they usually just, they grow and they end up getting big. As far as my tank upstairs, that's what I usually do. I have a lot of floating plants in my tank upstairs. I have a Salvi, uh, Salvinian Minima. And they usually lay their eggs in there and I have a lot of moss on one side of the tank. And they usually lay their eggs in the moss, so I usually pull the moss from that and then put it into another tank. I have um, a five gallon, which is a ready cycle for the babies to actually grow. Okay, this is some of the species that's available to the hobby. So I'm gonna go from left, top to bottom, and then right top to bottom. So the top left one is the, you guys seen it, it's in Petland. I've had some for sale before. That is the Forktail uh, Pseudomugo, also known as the Fucados. And then the, the middle one is the Pseudomugo Luminaris, okay? 
This one, the Pseudomigo luminaris is the same species and genus as the uh, Pseudomigo pascais. Um, the only reason why the Pseudomigo luminaris has its own species name is because the coloration and the DNA in the genetics is over 10% uh, in difference because of the coloration and the body features. Uh, the Pseudomigo pascai has a more duller look and um, finish is actually white instead of yellow. Okay, the bottom one is the Pseudomigo signifer, if I'm not mistaken. Um, these are our really dull looking, not too color colorful, but they are uh, available to the hobby here. Um, the top right is the Pseudomigo Gertrude. Um There are different types. There is the Aru 1, the Aru 3, and the Aru 2. Um, these ones are very, very nice. I've, I've owned my own, my own set. And they also, when they are into their meetings, when two males try to battle against each other, they flare up like this. These are all males that are flaring up and they're trying to you know, show off their colorization and their finish to one another. The middle one is the Pseudomigo um, Pascai. So the left is the Luminaris, the right is the Pascai. As you can see on the left, the colorization in the red is not as, you know, it's not as popping as the one on the left. Um, and the finish you can see on the right is what we call the ears, um, is white and the left is orange. And there is distinctive, um, Features on the tail where the top and bottom of the door of uh, the tail fin is white. On the right hand side, it's not as uh, bold as the one on the, the left. And the last one on the bottom right is the Pseudomigo Melis. This one I've only seen twice since I've been in the hobby and I've owned the Pseudomigos. I've actually owned the Melis. Um, they are fairly. Uh, Kind of a little bit more harder to keep than the past guys. I I had some, they died. So I'm trying to get some more and look, keep an eye out for more so I can start doing these guys. Um, there are, getting into the, the species and stuff, there are the ones that are in Australia. Um, I'm bad with scientific names, but there are some very, very nice ones in Australia that are very hard because they are brackish water, almost salt water, salinity. Pseudomigo rainbow fishes. But as I was straight up being so um, strict on exportation for fishes, it's hard to achieve. The only way we can probably get it is through getting the rainbow fish gains. Um, that's pretty much about it. Um, so, mahalo to front attendees. Do you guys have any questions? Okay, that's cool. Oh. I got one. What's up? For the fork tails, how can you tell when they're ready to actually start breeding? Um, the fork tails, okay, so with the females, the females in any type of um, breeding situations, the female will start to get kind of a little bit more bulkier. So that's when you kind of know when she's starting to ready to, um, ready to breed. Um, usually at about a 3 cm, they're probably ready, are ready to start breeding already at a young age. Um, Usually you'll see the male, he'll start to flare up against her, against the female. And usually the female, once she's ready, she'll start, you know, hiding inside of the moss and flaring back and forth in and out of the moss or, you know, your spawning moth or uh, the floating plants. They're pretty fun. I mean, they're pretty, I mean, they're pretty fun to keep, you know. Um, some people have really had difficult time breeding the Sudomugos, but I find them fairly easy to breed and they're fairly easy to keep. They're very nice, I love them. Any more questions? If not, we can just move on and go to the auction. Get out of here early. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you everybody. Oh, for the junior members, I don't see too many junior members tonight, but the junior members that attend 
um, see Lisa, she is giving away um, stuff for the kids uh, for attending. We want you to sign your name and show your plate to her so you guys can receive a gift from her for attending the half speeding. Um, Lance Pack over here on the left hand side has his raffle tickets, $2 a raffle ticket. So anything on that table is raffle. So $2 a raffle ticket, see Lance Pang. And whatever donation items that are here go to that table at the end of the night. I want to point out we have a 75 bag on the floor. Check it out. For all of you, those that are interested in a 75 gallon, it is a donation, so it will be cheaper than anybody that has been selling 75 gallons out there. So, what? I know. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys.